Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss about the SCR of sulfonamides. First of all, let us see the general structure of sulfonamide. And this is a simple sulfonamide, which is uh, nothing but the sulfonilamide. And here the benzene ring is attached with the sulfonamide group. So sulfonamide group should be given more preference. We can start the numbering here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In this way, the sulfonamide is attached at the first position and amine group is attached at the fourth position. So within this structure, we can observe the two nitrogens. One is the amine nitrogen and second is the amide nitrogen. They can be differentiated by how they are going to be connected to the phenyl ring. So here this amine nitrogen is attached to the phenyl ring through the sulfonamide by first position. So it can be called as N1. And this nitrogen is attached as an enilno nitrogen at the fourth position to the phenyl ring. So this can be called as N4 nitrogen. Now with these structural features, let us discuss about the SCR of sulfonamides. So, so how can we discuss the SCR of sulfonamides? In order to discuss and remember in easy way, let us divide this SCR into four parts. So first one is what is the SCR related to N4 amino group and aromatic ring, sulfonamide group and N1 amine nitrosin. And now let us go one by one and let us see what are the structural modifications that are possible and how the activity is going to be related. First one is the N4 amino group. So within the structure of the sulfonamide, this is the amine nitrogen attached at the fourth position. So this is the N4 amino group and this group is essential for activity. So if we are going to replace this group with any other group, it results in the loss of activity. Then what about the substitution on this amine nitrogen? Substitution on the N4 nitrogen of the amino nitrogen results in the two types of activities. Either it can result in the products, so few of the sulfonamides can act as products. Otherwise, it can produce the inactive sulfonamides. So here, many of the sulfonamides are going to be metabolized by n acetylation, which results in the inactive metabolites. So if any group is going to be substituted on this amino nitrogen, it results in the loss of activity. But sometimes it can also lead to the products which are going to be bioactivated within our physiological system to produce the free amino group at the fourth position. So in order to preserve the activity of sulfonamides, so this amino group should be unsubstituted. Why it is like this? Because we know that sulfonamides are acting by inhibition of the folic acid synthesis within the bacteria by competing with the PABA. PABA is nothing but the para-amino benzoic acid, which is again having an amino group on the benzene at the para position. So sulfonamides can compete with the PABA when they're having some structural similarity with the PABA. That's why sulfonamides with para-amino group on the benzene only produce the active sulfonamides. So here the substitution on the nitrogen can be used to produce the prodrags, but we have very few prodrags acting as sulfonamides. So first thing, let us see, this is a sulfonylamide. This sulfonylamide is undergoing a metabolism such that it's going to produce a metabolite like this. And here you can observe on the nitrogen, one of the group present, this group is nothing but the acetyl group. So now sulfonylamide is undergoing the n acetylation reaction such that it is going to produce the n acetyl sulfonylamide, which is an inactive metabolite of the sulfonylamide. So substitution on the N4 nitrogen results in the loss of activity. Similarly, we can observe another drag. This is the sulfa selazine. Within the structure of sulfa selazine, you can observe one of the group is going to be attached on the N4 amino nitrogen. So again, sulfa selazine is either inactive metabolite or a prodrag. So again, sulfa selazine is inactive, but it is not a metabolite. It is a prodrag which is intentionally prepared as a prodrag and when this drug is going to be administered in the body, it can be metabolized to produce the two active metabolites. You can observe that on the amino nitrogen, it is having the substitution which is attached by a double bond. So there is an azo linkage between the two nitrogens. That's why this linkage can be cleared by few of the enzymes azo reductases. Now these azo reductases within the gut wall can cleave the sulfur cells into two metabolites. So sulfur cells and when it is going to be cleaved, it gives the one of the sulfonamide. This is nothing but the sulfur pyridine. And what happens to the other moiety? The other moiety is nothing but the 5 amino salicylic acid. So in this way, sulfur cells is a prodrag which is going to split it into two components, 5 amino salicylic acid and sulfur pyridine. And this is because of the substitution on the N4 nitrogen, which results in the sulfur cells and as a prodrag. But here, which metabolite is more important for the therapeutic activity? Even sulfur cells and is a sulfonamide, but here the therapeutic activity is mainly related with the 5 amino salicylic acid. So here, this 5 amino salicylic acid acts as an anti inflammatory agent. That's why sulfur cells and can be given in the treatment of inflammatory bowel disorder. In this way, we have only few sulfonamides which are acting like prodrags. One of the examples is the sulfur cellzine. 
and previously the succinyl sulfathiazole and phthalyl sulfathiazole are also used as prodrugs but nowadays we have more active sulfonamides without any substitution on the n4 nitrosin second one is the aromatic ring so within this structure this is the aromatic ring and here you can observe it is a phenyl ring so this aromatic ring is essential and important for activity and what happens if this phenyl group is going to be replaced with other groups so replacement of this phenyl ring with other groups results in the loss of activity the phenyl ring should be there and it should not be replaced this is again because sulfonamides are going to compete with the PABA which is again having the phenyl ring so here amine group as well as phenyl ring are essential for activity and they should not be modified then what about the substitution this aromatic ring is substituted with a para amino group so amino group along with the phenyl ring is essential for activity but what happens with the other substitutions if ortho or meta substitution again results in the loss of activity so phenyl ring should not be replaced with the other rings and it should not be substituted at the ortho and meta positions only para substitution is allowed with the amino group third one is a sulfonamide group so what is the SCR related with the sulfonamide group and already we know that these category of drugs are commonly known as sulfonamide so sulfonamide group is essential for activity and it should not be replaced with other groups like the carboxylic acid or amide groups and this sulfonamide group should be directly attached to the aromatic ring without any carbon between them now you can see that the sulfonamide group is attached with the phenyl ring having a para amino group that means the sulfonamide group is attached to the aniline group that means sulfonamide group is attached to the aniline ring generally aniline is a weak base but this sulfonamide is acting like a weakly acidic group which results in the ionization of the drug at the physiological ph so what are the nitrogen of the sulfonamide group is always ionized because the sulfonamide is acting like a weakly acidic group so here you can observe this is a sulfonylamide and this acts as a weak acid and nitrogen of the sulfonamide can be ionized one of the proton can be removed from this sulfonamide such that it is going to produce a ionized form like this this ionized form is highly stable why it is like this because this negatively charged nitrogen is attached with the sulfoxide groups which makes this anion more stabilized by the resonance so here the lone pair of electrons can be shifted in this way and uh, what are the double bond can be shifted to the oxygen such that they are going to produce a resonating structure like this and another oxygen can also participate to give the another resonating structure in this way the ionized form is more stabilized by resonance that's where the physiological ph the nitrogen of the sulfonamide is existing as ionized form so that's why sulfur so that's why sulfonamide is a weak acid with a pk at 10 but because it's having the pk value around 10 it results in the formation of crystals in the urine resulting in the crystal urea so in our previous video we have discussed about the crystal urea and how can be how this crystal urea can be minimized by structural modifications so here again the structure is going to be modified such that the pk is going to be reduced to the optimal level which results in the less risk of crystal urea so that's about the assay related with the sulfonamide group next was the n1 amino group so within this structure this is one of the very important group the n1 amino group which which can be modified uh, to produce the different types of sulfonamides this n1 amino group can be mono substituted such that the nitrogen becomes a secondary nitrogen we have seen that in the sulfonylamide it is a primary nitrogen it is not attached with any other uh, groups but when it is a mono substituted then it becomes the secondary nitrogen so what are the n1 amino group may be either primary or secondary but when it is mono substituted it increases the activity what happens with the dye substitution dye substitution results in the loss of activity so it should be mono substituted but when it is mono substituted with the heterocyclic ring it results in the highly potent drugs so here the n1 amino group should be substituted with the heterocyclic rings so here you can observe one of the structure which is having a acetyl group on the nitrogen of the sulfonamide and this is the other structure which is having the pyrimidine nucleus on the amine nitrogen of the sulfonamide the first one is the sulfa histamide and second one is the sulfa diazine both are having the substitution on the nitrogen of the sulfonamide but in the histamide acetyl group is present in the sulfa diazine pyrimidine group is present by introduction of the heterocyclic rings it increases the potency of the drug that's why you can observe in most of the sulfonamides a heterocyclic ring attached to the n1 nitrogen so now we have seen that this n1 amino group should be mono substituted but we have to maintain the pk 
at an optimal level. So what is the optimal PKE? The optimal PKE of sulfamides is around 6.6 .6 to the 7.4 where they are going to produce the high therapeutic activity. Why it is like this? Because we have seen that the sulfamides are ionized. So this ionization depends on the PK value of the sulfamides as well as the physiological pH. So at this PK values of 6.6 .6 to 7.4 the sulfonamides are sufficiently unionized that means they are both ionized as well as unionized but we know that unionized form is highly lipophilic which can cross few of the lipophilic membranes so in order to show the antibacterial activity these drugs should cross the bacterial cell membrane so now at this uh, pka value sulfonamides are sufficiently unionized such that they are having the optimal lipophilicity which makes them to cross the bacterial cell membrane to produce the antibacterial activity. So this PK is optimal for sulfonamides. And even regarding the crystalluria, at this PK values, sulfonamides produce less crystallization because at the urinary pH, they are around 50% ionized, which results in the less risk of crystal formation. But how can we achieve this uh, PK value? This PK value can be achieved by introduction of the heterocyclic rings on the N1 amino group. So this is one of the example this, and this is another example. The first one is the sulfisoxazole and second is the sulfamethoxazole. Both are having some heterocyclic ring systems on the nitrogen which increase their potency as well as which bring the pK value nearer to the optimal pK value resulting in the more antibacterial activity with less risk of crystalluria. So these are the various structural activity relationships that are observed with the sulfonamides. So sulfonamides are having the two types of nitrogens, N1 nitrogen and N4 nitrogen. N1 nitrogen is an amide nitrogen, whereas N4 nitrogen is a amine nitrogen. This N4 amino group is essential for activity because it's having some stru structural similarity with the para amino benzoic acid. And if it is substituted, it results in either inactive metabolites or the prodrags. So sulfasalazine is one of the prodrag which is having an azo linkage on the amine nitrogen which can be cleared by azoreductases to produce the sulfapyridine and 5-amino salicylic acid. 5-amino salicylic acid is mainly having the anti-inflammatory activity. That's why sulfasalazine is used in the treatment of inflammatory bowel disorder. Similarly, phenyl ring is essential for activity which should be directly attached with the sulfonamide at the first position and amine group at the fourth position. And it should not be ortho or meta substituted and it should not be replaced with the other ring systems. And sulfamide group is again essential for activity. It should not be replaced with the carboxamide or carboxylic acid groups. And this sulfamide group can be easily ionized at the physiological pH because it acts as a weakly acidic drag and it can lose one of the protons to produce the anionic nitrogen on the sulfonamide. And finally, the N1 amino group should be monosubstituted and it should not be disubstituted. If it is disubstituted, it results in the loss of activity. And monosubstitution with the heterocyclic ring produce the more potent drags. So that's about the SCR of sulfur mites. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your friends. Post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.